Hello and welcome back to Transfer Review. Yes, we are in the black chairs, which means we're going to discuss some moves that probably won't happen. Let's open with a corker, Pato. Yes, well, I've got a move that definitely won't happen. Man United are apparently going to make a double swoop for Kyle Walker and Danny Ooh. Rose. This per The Independent, they reckon the fee would be £60 million no for chance. the pair of them. Oscar money. Bargain. Right, anyway. I can't see this happening at all. Obviously, Man United have got a need. They don't seem to be entirely confident with Valencia on the right. They've also tried Darmian there, Ashley Young, Fosu Mensa, who's a defensive midfielder. You know, they don't seem happy with their fullback situation at all. And I could understand why you'd want Kyle Walker and Danny Rose. They're both incredibly fast, athletic. They're in their peak years. Mm. They're both 26 years old. And they're vital to that Pochettino high-pressing system. They provide the width on the sides and they're able to get up and down seemingly endlessly. The fitness level in that Pochettino side is absurd. Walker has made 19 appearances this season. Danny Rose has made 15. And between the two of them, they've provided six assists and two goals. I completely understand the interest, however, I think you're going to tell me why it won't happen. Mate, there is no way in hell Daniel Levy is letting these pair lead no. for £60 million, especially when Chelsea were prepared to pay £45 million for someone like Koulibaly. Now, mm. there is no great pressure to sell either. The pair signed long-term 70k a week contracts last year. They are tied down, mate. And if he did sanction this transfer, he runs the risk of pissing Potch off big time. And there's a, as we know, there's a lot of admirers, there's a lot of potential suitors out there for a manager of his calibre. We think you're more than likely to see exits with United rather than, uh, what's the opposite to exit? Uh, entries. Entries this season with the likes of Depay, uh, Schneidlin and Schweinsteiger probably leaving. Yep, yep. If United are going to sign someone, I'd, I'd maybe say uh, Bakayoko from Monaco. Yeah, he's been linked as has Fabinho from Monaco. Mm. So this one, I think, is a big fat new. Moving to the other end of the believability <laughs> scale. We have Stefan Jovetic, who looks like he's on his way to Sevilla from Inter Milan on loan with an option to buy set at just 14 million euros. Ooh. Mate, I could buy him. <laughs> yeah, and you can see why the Brill Cream fanatic would come at such a reduced rate. He's only made five substitute appearances in Serie A this season. Mm. It looked like he might have fit into De Boer's system with a 4-3-3 playing out wide left, but he's not got a sniff. Do Under that. Pioli. Yeah. It's terrible, so, isn't it? Calcio and Mercado have said uh, Inter have recently had permission from owners sooning to sanction the transfer, and that's happened in the last 24 hours. So it looks like this one is going to happen. And is this going to be Monchi's last bit of business as director of football at Inter? Well, it certainly that's looks severe, that sorry. way before he heads off to Roma. Have the Montenegrin is a fantastic player, and he'd be a great fit in that San Paoli mm. system. As we know, they've brought in Nasri, who's been excellent. They've got Vitolo too. And so we can really see him fitting in. But the problem is whether you can keep him fit. Manchester City, they saw his potential, but they couldn't keep him on the pitch. He spent all his time in the treatment room. And once again, that's happened at Inter Milan. The talent is just wasting away on the bench. The other question here is what Sevilla do if they do get him? Do they let one of this roster of attacking players go out? They've got Ganso, they've got Sarabia, they've got Correa, they've got Vazquez, and they've got Kiyotake. And you'd expect that at least one of those would have to leave to make space for Jovetic, with Kiyotake linked with a move back to the Bundesliga. Certainly is, mate. So it looks like this one is going to happen, guys. Do you think it will pan out for him? Let us know in the comments below. Our next transfer rumour concerns young German left winger is Julian Brandt and TalkSport think he might be on his way, Pato, to Manchester City or Liverpool to the tune of around 15 to 20 million. But, you know, in today's market, don't be surprised if that's near the 30 mark. Can you see this happening, Pato? Uh, well, his current contract expires in 2019 mm. and Bayer Leverkusen have said that if they were going to let him go, they'd expect something like Leroy Sané money. That was about £37 million. So the current fees being talked about are probably not enough to tempt them into a move. Now, Brandt has already rejected Bayern. He did that in 2013. He wanted to stay at Leverkusen and develop and he's turned into a fast, strong, tall, creative, really interesting wide player and he's been performing miracles for Germany's under-21 team. Now, Liverpool, they're obviously looking for attacking backup. Mane is away at the African Cup of Nations. Coutinho's been injured this season. And while Lallana's been in very good form with seven goals and seven assists in the league, 
after you get through that first rank of attacking players, you end up with people like Origi mm. and Shea Ojo. Now, they both look like very promising talents, but you could see why they'd want someone who has the potential to develop more, but is already performing at a very high level. So the Reds, I see why they'd be interested in. And at Manchester City, they seem to have finally settled on a formation, don't they, mate? It's a 4-2-3-1 with either De Bruyne or or Sterling playing in that advanced left-sided position. And I can't see him, despite how good he is, he's tearing at the Bundesliga, displacing either of them any time soon, mate. And you look at the likes of Zinchenko to come back. Mm -hmm. the Guardiola rates very highly. And you're looking at a very plentiful front line for the Spaniards. He's, uh, he's also said he doesn't want to go to Bayern as early as this morning, at which at time of filming is a Tuesday. He's obviously a very level-headed young guy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's rejected their advances twice now. He's obviously very well advised, and he's come on leaps and bounds under Roger Schmidt. So we can expect him to stay there for another year. Although, have read, mate, that uh, as early as 2018, that triggers a clause in his contract wherein he's available for just £12.5 million. A paltry sum for some of his calibre. So if they want big cash for him, 2017 might be the year to get to get rid. But uh, can you guys see this happening? Will someone like Julian Brandt adjust well to the Premier League? Klopp or Guardiola? Let us know in the comments below. Next up comes a story from Bilt who have linked Javier Chicharito Hernandez with a move to Liverpool. Now, as we know, Liverpool are looking for a backup forward and they, apparently they could get the Mexican for as little as 21 million euros. Steal. Well, he had a great season last year. 17 goals in 25 starts and six in five in the Champions League. This year, slightly less impressive, five in 11 starts with another four substitute appearances. These are still very, very decent numbers. And given that they've already got that front line locked down and they just want somebody who's another option, Hernandez seems like a good one. He's in peak years, he's used to playing in a pressing system, he could slot right in and immediately contribute. That makes sense to me. Mate, someone, someone should tell West Ham, they'd throw 30 million at him. Yeah. Definitely put in a bid for him. David Sullivan's on the phone right now. But, Pat, so the question is, would he suit Liverpool's style? Now, their front three are heavily involved in their transition game from the back to the front, something the little P is not really well regarded for. I can remember a few stray five-yard passes from the Mexican. In fact, his passing average is only 70%, his passing accuracy, sorry. While Mane and Firmino both sit at 80, which is pretty, pretty decent for a forward, for a forward yeah. player, definitely. Delving a little deeper, Firmino averages nearly 50 passes a game. Chicharito is currently averaging 19, and the Brazilian also averages 2.4 key passes a game. Chicharito averages one. So, while, you, while what you made a perfectly legitimate point about playing in that pressing system, he's not really used to being responsible for building up players. No. So maybe Klopp will give this one the wide berth. What do you think? Daniel Sturridge wouldn't be too happy, would he, if uh, Chicharito came on board, I can imagine. Well, yeah, they've already got a plan B. I'm not sure that they necessarily need yeah. another one. Hernandez, we'd expect to stay put. Unless China come calling. Last but not least, it is the transfer shock up. And this one is something special, Pat. It is stinking the place up. It is Jordan Vertut of Villa fame to Juventus. Villa fame? All right, mate. So... Well, he's not actually at Villa at the moment, is he? He's at Saint-Étienne on loan. He joined Villa in 2015 for eight million pounds from Nantes. Don't make a joke. But he's currently valued at 6.8 million pounds according to transfer marks. That is not the sort of trajectory you want your players to be on. Okay, he has a goal and two assists in 15 appearances from central midfield, which isn't terrible. 2.5 tackles and 1.4 interceptions a game. But if you're going to get picked up from League 1 on loan from a championship side and go to Juventus, you bet to have pretty fucking incredible mm. numbers. And these are not incredible. In fact, they're completely credible. I believe them. <laughs> They're not impressive. I mean, 2.1 fouls per game would intimate he's got a bit of a nasty streak. Not a like for like replacement if Pjanic was to go. No, exactly. Is he? And uh, they're already stopped in terms of combative average centre midfielders. They've got Hernanes, they've got Storaro, they've got Azamoa. So they've still got Azamoa. Yeah, I mean, he's still, on the, he's still on the books at Juve. So can't see this one happening at all. It was obviously a slow news day at, don't know where this is from. It's that bad, I didn't even write down where it's from. So. But Vertu did the classic thing that you do. He was asked about it and he said, I don't know if it's happening. Yeah, of course it is. Oh, it's all, in, it's all in God's lap now. All right, mate. Uh, yeah. It's not happening. Shut up. So that was this week's transfer review, guys. Yeah. Have you seen any stories that have tickled your proverbial pickle? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah, and don't forget to get at us on Twitter if there are any transfer rumours you want to discuss. 
then look at CP Hamill and Patrick BVS. And as ever, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you next week. Bye.